Hey everyone and welcome to ProMix Academy. My name is Carlo Libertini and in this tips and tricks video with Studio One, we're going to be looking at templates. Now you think you know templates, but trust me, there are so much advantages to utilizing, understanding and exploring templates that I feel it's often not only fun, but fundamental to really get to know them. Now, whether you're using the built-in ones or creating your own or sharing some with your friends, there's a lot of possibilities here to explore. So let's talk about getting started. Now here I opened up the new song tab and we got the new song window. Now there's basically three ways to get started with templates here in Studio One. There's styles which come included with Studio One and by styles they mean what style of music are you working with? You're just doing basic band recording, house instrument set, mix arrangement, multi-track, piano, podcast, and it goes on and on and on. These are really thought out and really intelligent. And I recommend exploring these because as I mentioned before, here's a good tip for you. It's a great way to kind of often expose yourself to new ways of thinking in terms of like even signal flow and effects processing. A lot of these are really fun to explore. So definitely check that out. Next, you've got interfaces. We'll get into that. This is related to when you're using dedicated PreSonus hardware. Really cool. Helps unlock that additional layer of, of utility because you're using hardware that's created by PreSonus to be used with Studio One. So it interfaces perfectly every time. And of course, users. This is where you would create and store your own presets. So let's get started. So my first tip would be to definitely explore the styles page. In fact, Here's another tip for you. Notice that not, uh, not only do you get a title to the template, but we have a brief description. I noticed that this one says simple multi-track recording session with eight inputs. Well, that's perfect for me because my interface has eight inputs. So I would probably gravitate to something like this because of that description. Always leave a description. It's really, really good practice. But more importantly, here's another tip for you. Always check the settings page here to the right of the styles. And the reason why is because I want to know where my audio is being saved. I can give it a song title, but most importantly, I can set the resolution. I don't want it at 44.1. I want to set it to 48. So make a good habit to always check the settings page. And then of course, give it a name. Let's say I want to name this song something simple. Hello. I can tell where I want to save it. Here's my resolution. I'm using a template and just choose OK and it's going to open up a template for us. Now I know this template will be ready to go here. If you open up, expand the tracks a little bit, you see input one, input two, input three, input four, all the way up to input eight for us. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm using an eight put audio interface, so I'm ready to go just as easy as that. It has my song title. I'm at the right sample rate and voila, here we go. Simple, beautiful, elegant, and fast. That's workflow. Let me close this session. Now, if I wanted to save it, here's the difference. If I have audio tracks obviously printed here, then you would come up to file and choose save as, and I would give that a new name and it would save my audio content in there. Okay. I'm going to close this. If you do have audio files, definitely save your work. But in this example, I'm just going to close the uh, template we made. Now let's go back to new song. Some of these templates, as I explained before, can help expose you to new terms of signal flow, sound even, and uh, arrangements. Because for example, I know that some of these actually include audio files or MIDI data sometimes, so you can hear the virtual instruments that are bundled with that template. I know Piano Ballad does that. Let's select this one next, come up to my sample rate, 48. We could, again, change the song title or where it's saved to and choose OK. And the reason why I wanna open this one up is to show you, now why is there why is there data here included with this inter with this template? It's simple, as I mentioned before, so you could hear what the virtual instrument that's on that track can do. For example, here on track four, we've got drums brought to us by the beautiful Presence XT. See, we've got a classic kit here. Uh, track five, we have piano and strings. Track six, legato hall strings and electronic bass. So if, this is just a way to jumpstart your creativity. Ooh, 
Okay, that's pretty cool. But let's say you heard something in there in a real world working scenario, like, oh, wait, wait, that's a really cool reverb or a chorus or something. Well, then explore the template. Okay, here we go. Look at that. We've got chorus here on the guitar input. We got uh, some virtual guitar amp going on brought to us by Ampire and some reverb sends. So, you know, if you hear something you like, explore this template and learn, learn from it. It's not always about, you know, uh, what you put into it. It's what it can give you sometimes as well. Be open to that. All right. So this is another template here that comes included. And of course, there are many, many, many more. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, there's so much everything from vocal recording, vocal and guitar, songwriter, rock band, podcasting, which is huge today and so on. But always remember to check your setting page here. Now let's go back to interfaces for a second. Now, again, as I mentioned before, if you're using Prisonis hardware, we have templates to help interface with that interface. And why would you want to do it? Because it will unlock an additional layer. You know that a lot of the functions on that interface can now be also controlled with the software. So they communicate the best. You get every advantage and it's going to just interface perfectly for you and add really an extra layer of two of flexibility, connectivity, and workflow. So if you're using a PreSonus interface, great. Uh, you know, I happen to have a couple of these. I had the Fire Studio Mobile for years. It's a real tanked thing, never quit on me. The new Quantum 2626, it's a really great unit. Visit PreSonus.com, obviously, for more information. But that would be interfaces. And now under user, here we have my personal templates that I've made. Now you can create a blank one from here. And in fact, let's do that now. I'm just going to choose empty song. Come up, make sure it's my resolution. Everything is where I want it. And I'm going to give it a title. Say, okay, this is a working title and choose. Okay. And what are we presented with? A beautiful clean slate. Now I'm going to close my browser window. Here we have something clean to get started with. And I'll quickly create a basic template for us together. You and me. Ready? Here we go. I'm going to come up to the plus sign. Uh, and let's say I want to create eight tracks of drum. It's remembering my last settings, by the way. And I want to also pack them into a folder, which you know I like to do. And uh, these will be all mono tracks. And I'll choose OK. Let's say I'm recording drums today. Here's my drums. Now, if I activate the group icon here, because they're packed in a folder, I could start editing, editing them as a group. I just change all the colors, for example. And if you want to edit each track individually, just deactivate that icon. There's a little tip for you, okay? I got my drums here. I can set my inputs correspondingly to tracks one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to eight. I can have my overheads, you name it. Label each one as you go ahead. I could do OVH left and right and so on and so on. Always label your work. Okay, so this would be eight tracks of drums. Let's open up our mixer. Here's our mixer. Nice. Now, what else can you do? Here's another tip for you. You can insert effects in advance with templates, because if you know you're going to be rolling off some low end, why go in and insert an EQ eight times? Why? We're talking about workflow. We're talking about speeding things up. So here's another tip for you in advance with the group icon now selected here. Let's add an EQ. Let's go to the Pro Q. And now you'll see that Pro Q is inserted on every single track, all eight, all eight of them. Okay. And now you can have different unique EQ settings for each one. Let's say on track one, I wanted to do a low cut here at about 36 dBs. And let's say I want to roll everything off at 60. Beautiful. And let's say I wanted to boost a little bit. Mm. Let's say I want to cut a little bit here and boost a little bit here. Done. And now that's on track one. And on track two, let's say you wanted to have a little bit of high cut. And I'm just doing this, for example, on track three, you could do a little bit of presence boost as well there and so on. OK, so here's EQ, EQ1, EQ2, EQ3 on track three and so on and so forth. And the other ones I just left the same. So those settings will now be part of my template. This is the advancement. This is how we should be working today. We should be working smarter, not harder.
I know we hear that all the time, but there's a good reason for it because it keeps you in that creative headspace that we want to be as creators. And every time I have to stop and think or take time out of my, my momentum to do something redundant, I'm kind of killing creativity. So if I leave you with anything today about working with templates, it's that simple fact. Stay in that creative, creative headspace as much as possible. And that's the gift that templates will give you every time. All right, now, speaking of which, let's go up to my groups. Now with groups selected again, I wanna send these to a bus channel. Okay, here's my bus channel, okay, drums. Notice here's another tip, it appeared to the left. If I come up to my settings page, you could, you could choose where you want all your groupings to appear here, okay? That's fine with me. And you could add, uh, let's see, the plus sign will allow you to insert individual effects, but the down arrow has kind of built-in effects chains. Let's say I wanted to area overheads. There you go. So if this is something I'm working with all the time now, I'm creating my own template. This is now ready to start basically recording drums, let's say. Come up to File and choose save as template all right now we'll call it what eight drum tracks dash go and i'll give it a simple description as i mentioned before it's important to do this just eight uh let me oh my asterisk eight chan of drums <laughs> exclamation point and then just choose OK. Now, there's no audio on here. If there was, then we would definitely, when we save this, when we close it, it'll ask you, you want to save, choose yes, if you had your drums recorded, of course. Or if you're just creating templates, you don't have to, you can just choose no. Now, let's go back to our new song. And here we go. Eight track of drums ready to go. Every time I open that up, I'm ready to start recording drums. Now, of course, you know, I would probably add some more tracks for, um, maybe just referencing some audio and such, but you can build these templates to, to any end at all, any end at all. So let's close this up and let's go to another one of the templates that I've created. Here's a real world working scenario for you. I've got CL My Band template. Here's one that I work with my group quite often. And again, you'd come up here, give it a song name. Let's say today we're working on a new song and it's called The Road. And we'll call it We'll call it the road. Make sure my sample rate's right. Everything's there. I know where it's going. Set the BPM if I want to. We could change that later. I'll show you how and choose OK. And it's going to open my template for my personal group. This, look at all this. If you had to do this one step at a time, it might take 10, 20, 20 minutes. Who knows? But it's ready for me now. And look how elegant this is, too. Here's my is my tracks window. Look at that. I have everything compacted into folders here. Elegant, really elegant, smooth, fast, acoustic, bass guitars, DI, amp, background vocals, and a lead vocal track. And I also have a start here with a two bar count before we start uh, the performance here on bar three. So I can do things like that. I also have markers, I've got chords, I've got my tempo, which we can now edit if we wanted. We could edit the tempo anytime we wanted. Let's say I could take the tempo and say, mm, I want the tempo to be for this song about maybe 115. There's my tempo at 115 for this song. And then I could save that as a new template or just save it generally as a song file, you know, and we are ready to go. So again, this is a template that I made and it's elegant. Here's my drums here on the left, guitars left, right, lead, acoustics, and all of my effects here and my busing. So it does save time. It does expose you to new ways of thinking. There's a lot you can do with it in terms of sharing your templates. Let's say I wanted to share this template with somebody. Come up to file. I'm sorry, edit. Let's go oh, song, song. Show media, folder, and explore. Choose that. Now this works whether you're on Mac or Windows and come up to Studio One, go to templates, and I'm going to go to songs and here's my templates. Now you wanna save both of these files. See, here's my band template, my band template. Here's the data file at 1345 kilobytes and the song file at one kilobyte right here. So you wanna make sure that both of those right there are included with 
the file. You can zip them together if you wanted, and you could share these. So it's kind of a social aspect to creating templates too. There is, there is a lot of interest in templates, obviously, but are you using them to its fullest? Are you just painstakingly creating sessions from start over and over again? Well, stop doing that. Number one, explore the templates that are included here in Studio One. Let's go back to this page. This again can expose you to new ways of thinking about signal flow and effects. If you have a PreSonus interface, great. You can jumpstart your creativity and unlock some new layers of opportunity there in signal flow with connecting your piece of hardware directly with the software. And of course, definitely create your own presets. There is no excuse not to be doing this in today's audio world. Make them, create them, have fun with them, share them. And just as I always say, stay busy and stay creative. Thank you everyone for watching. My name is Carlo Libertini. Thank you. Hey everyone, and thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Leave your comments below. Like, share, and subscribe.